Yes, today we're looking into the 1978 spaceship movie, Star Crash. Or as I like to call it, we're totes not Star Wars. Which features this laser sword. Which is totes not a lightsaber. And this intergalactic villain, who is totes not Darth Vader. And this wise old man, who is totes not Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this blobby green guy, who is totes not a ball sack. With many villains and heroes along the way. Including this guy who is totes not David Hasselhoff. Actually, scrap that. That totally is the Hoff. In this movie, we follow two space pirates, Stella Star and her sidekick, Acton, whom, once caught by Imperial police, are told by the Intergalactic Emperor that they will be free of charges if they stop the evil Count Zarf Arn, who has a hidden, devastating weapon, where our heroes go on a space adventure in order to save the universe. So, what could be said about Star Crash, other than it being a Star Wars clone slash ripoff? Well, it's cheap, unforgiving, trashy, shameless, campy, sexy, and outrageous grindhouse science fiction trash. And I absolutely love it for it. So, get ready to spread your toast with a whole heap of I can't believe it's not Star Wars as we look at the 10 things that you didn't know about Star Crash. So, let's get the laser guns and disco hairdos ready as we check it out. I don't have any hair. Number 10. The director claims that Star Crash is not a Star Wars cash grab. So it's time we address the elephants in the room. The fact that Star Crash does have the notoriety as being labelled as a Star Wars cash grab. In that clearly someone saw Star Wars and what a huge success it was and wanted a piece of that pie. And basically make their own version of it. However, Star Crash's director, Luigi Cosi, says otherwise. He claims that the movie's script and designs were made before the release of Star Wars. And this claim also seems to be backed up by Star Crash's co-writer and co-producer, Nat Watchberger? Watchberger? What? Yeah, Nat, who claims that after observing samples of Star Crash at Cannes Film Festival 1977, he decided that his company will start production on the movie, and thus Star Crash was now off the ground. Both the Cannes Film Festival and the release of Star Wars took place in May 1977. However, there are other claims that it was producer Nat Watchersberg, yeah, Nat, who in fact wanted to make a Star Wars clone, and told Cosy he liked his idea, but he basically wanted it to be more Star Wars. In other words, a Star Wars clone. Only Cosy hadn't seen Star Wars, so he got his hands on the Star Wars novelization and used that to help him come up with Star Crash. So, as you can see, there are two very conflicting stories. But I know what some of you may be thinking. What do I think? Is Star Crash a Star Wars ripoff? Or is the whole thing just a coinky dink? I have absolutely no opinion at all. <laughs> Number 9. From Bond Villain to Stellar Star. There was only one actress who director Luigi Cosi envisioned in the role of the heroic Stella Star, and that was the English actress and model Caroline Munro. Munro made it big in the early part of the 70s, starring in a few Hammer horror movies, as well as a standout role in The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, where she became a sought-after actress. She turned down the villainous role of Ursa from Superman in favour of playing what is possibly her most famous and recognisable role, the villainous Bond girl Naomi in The Spy Who Loved Me, where she starred opposite Roger Moore. And so, of course, this leads us to Star Crash, where she played intergalactic badass Stella Star. She spends a huge chunk of the movie in her space bikini, and I'm not gonna lie, she looks awesome. 
However, that bikini did cause some issues, as the company who were distributing Star Crash, American International Pictures, panicked and thought that if she wears the bikini too much, then Star Crash may have issues when it comes to being broadcast on network TV. So this is why we see her go through several costume changes. And it seems that she was fully committed to the role, as she did her own stunts, and her husband at the time, Judd Hamilton, played Elle the Robot. But when you watch Star Crash, that's not Munro's voice coming out of her mouth, as she was dubbed by American actress Candy Clark, who previously had a memorable role as Debbie Midway in American Graffiti, and would go on to star as the diner lady who gets crushed in the phone booth in the Blob remake. Regardless, Stella Star is a memorable space babe. Number 8. Production Takes Off Star Crash was entirely an Italian production, with filming taking place at Cinema City Studios in Rome, the same studio where spaghetti westerns like The Good, The Bad and The Ugly were filmed. Star Crash was given a budget of $4 million, which is very tiny for a space opera, especially when compared to Star Wars, which had a budget of $11 million, and even that was considered low. Filming also extended to Tunisia, Morocco and Hollywood. Now, the filming took place over a six-month period, but there were consistent delays in filming taking place due to financing issues. According to IMDb, the original title of the movie was The Adventures of Stella Star, before settling for Star Crash. Director Luigi Cosi was a fan of Ray Harryhausen and wanted Star Crash to resemble one of his movies, as opposed to Star Wars, referring to Star Crash as Simbad in Space, hence the frequent use of stop-motion effects, which may actually explain his desire to cast Carolyn Munro, who, as mentioned, starred in The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. The special effects of the movie were created by American developers, and the miniature effects were put together by Italian artists. And to be honest, given that this was a low-budget space movie of the 70s, the effects and model work are actually pretty good. Keep in mind, this was less than half the budget of Star Wars. Although, I always found it weird that space in this movie had multicolored stars. Oh well, this was the late 70s, so to me, this is Disco Space. Number 7. The Acton character was meant to be a blobby alien with big white hair. The production of Star Crash was definitely a pretty wild ride. On the DVD commentary, novelist and author Stephen Romano described the making of Star Crash as, quote, an Italian film produced by French people, starring British people, inspired by every American trend going on in filmmaking around about that time. By all accounts, there was an immense pressure too, as the movie was a mad rush to get made. So there were some things that were changed at the last minute, namely the character Acton, Stella's sidekick, who was played by Marjo Gortner. You see, his character was originally going to be a monstrous looking alien, but when it came to doing the makeup, he refused to wear his heavy alien makeup. Now, part of his look was a big white wig, which made him feel that he looked like a 90-year-old Shirley Temple. So, they just left the actor as is. I guess there was such a mad rush to get the movie made, as cheaply and quickly as possible, they were like, Oh, so you don't want to wear your alien makeup? Okay, fine. See if we care. Let's just get this beast of a movie made. <laughs> There are also some scenes that were shot for the movie, but never used, including a scene with a dinosaur, as well as a big crab monster, and a scene where Stella Star gets caught in quicksand. Number 6. Christopher Plummer had a great time making the movie. So the movie's big bad, the evil Count Zarfan, was played by American actor, Joe Spinnell. He had previously had bit parts in the Godfather movies and Rocky movies, as well as Taxi Driver. He was also hanging out with Steven Spielberg when he found out that he didn't get nominated for Best Director for Jaws. And he brings a lot of cheesy fun to the part. You can tell the guy's having a great time. The production wanted a big time actor to star in Star Crash, probably to give the movie some clout. After all, Star Wars had its own veteran British actor, so Star Crash was going to get its own veteran British actor, in the form of Christopher Plummer, who stars as the wise Emperor. 
He was supposedly paid $10,000 a day for his efforts, to which, word has it, he only spent one day on set, with him being in Rome for a total of three days, and all his scenes were filmed in one go. Now, Christopher Plummer was actually really happy to go and do filming for Star Crash, not necessarily just for the paycheck, although that would have been nice, but simply because he loved filming in Rome. He further stated that getting to Rome was the greatest thing to ever happen to him, and he further said he'll even star in an adult movie if it's filmed in Rome, as he just loves the place so much. And he also spoke highly of his role of the Emperor, calling it a wonderful part to play. So, despite being a supposed Star Wars ripoff made on the cheap, Christopher Plummer, he couldn't get enough of it. Number 5. You Don't Hassle the Hoff so it's here we get to the movie's other well-known face, a young pre-mega-fame David Hasselhoff. The then young fresh-faced Hasselhoff had already impressed audiences for his role in The Young and the Restless, but he was still a few years off from his big break in Knight Rider, when he starred as the Emperor's son, Prince Simon. Although, Hasselhoff got into a few scrapes while making Star Crash, as according to IMDB, on his first day of filming, I guess he was a little too rambunctious, as he punched out a stuntman's tooth. Whoa, easy there, tiger. It's also been claimed that while making the movie, Hasselhoff got quite sick with food poisoning, so much so a production assistant had to replace him for several of his scenes. Well, fingers crossed it wasn't the one whose tooth he knocked out. In fact, the case of food poisoning on the set of Star Crash may have been quite severe, as going back to IMDb, yes I know everyone loves IMDb, stellar star actress Carolyn Munro told Phantasm magazine in 1993 that she needed a trip to the bathroom so bad, she thought to herself, well, it's a good thing she's wearing that plastic suit over her bikini. <laughs> Yikes. Well, you know what they say, in space no one can hear you poop. Number 4. A Whoopsie Daisy on the Poster So it's here we get to the posters of Star Crash, and some of them are truly quite beautiful and amazing works of art. However, there's a very amusing story when it comes to Star Crash's main poster. The poster was drawn up by John Soley, whom had illustrated many famous movie posters, including Soylent Green, Shaft's Big Score, and Smokey and the Bandit. Now, his poster was illustrated after set photos were sent to him. However, sadly, and humorously, the prints of the main spaceship that were sent to him were printed upside down. So poor Soli obviously thought to himself, oh yeah, I guess that's what the spaceship looks like. So here on the movie's poster for all to see, the illustration of the spaceship is upside down. <laughs> How could you not love this muck up? And it oddly goes of the low-budget grindhouse aspect of the movie. Oh well, it can't be as awkward as this poster, which flat-out features a Star Destroyer and the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, you're not really helping your case here, guys, about not being a Star Wars clone. Then there's this German poster, which flat-out copies the layout of the original Star Wars poster, so much so, Stella and Acton are even wearing similar white robes to Luke and Leia. Number 3. Producers feared the composer would bail When it came to scoring Star Crash, originally Italian composer Ennio Morricone was offered to create the music for Star Crash, but the good, the bad and the ugly musician turned the gig down. So instead the production got legendary James Bond composer John Barry to score the movie. And he does so with joy and wonderment, creating a lively 1970s space sound. The funky yet powerful score is definitely a highlight of Star Crash. However, it seems that the filmmakers behind Star Crash didn't want Barry to watch the movie, as they were so scared that he wouldn't like it that he'll quit scoring the movie and be done with it. But quit, he did not. And the following year, Barry would dabble with the space genre again, with Disney's Black Hole and the James Bond space adventure, Moonraker. Because the late 70s was all about disco and space. In later years, Star Crash became something of a forgotten movie. More on that later, where Barry would recycle some of the music that he had made for Star Crash and reuse it for the 1985 drama movie Out of Africa, and that would earn him an Oscar. 
So does that technically mean Star Crash features an Oscar winning score? <laughs> Love it. Number two, Roger Corman saved Star Crash. To put it bluntly, Star Crash nearly, well, crashed. It's here we get to awesome schlock filmmaker, the legendary Roger Corman, who by all tents and purposes, saved Star Crash at the 11th hour. When the movie was put together, the original distributors, American International Pictures, saw the completed film and were like, uh, yeah, nah, we don't like this final product, so we ain't going to release it. And just like that, Star Crash was abandoned. Until Roger Corman got wind of the situation. He was curious to see how a low-budget spaceship movie would perform in the box office. So he stepped in with his company, New World Pictures, to release Star Crash under their banner. The movie's trailer was edited together by none other than Gremlins director Joe Dante, who in his earlier career worked for Corman. And the Star Crash trailer is supposedly the last movie trailer that Dante edited together. So really, in essence, Corman really saved Star Crash's bacon. And he must have been impressed with the movie, as he would go on to produce fellow Star Wars clone, Battle Beyond the Stars, just two years later. <laughs> wow. What a time to be alive, I guess. Even though back then I wasn't alive, but you know what I mean. Number one, crashed into obscurity. Star Crash was initially released in Germany 1978, but wouldn't reach the US or Italy until early 1979. It had its US premiere in Los Angeles, where fans of Star Wars, who just couldn't wait one more year for The Empire Strikes Back to come out, could now go and see a new space adventure. One that's exactly the same as Star Wars, just cheaper. Sadly, Star Crash wasn't going to have the same levels of success as Star Wars, as it only made $478,000 in the US box office, against its $4 million budget. Despite being nominated for Best International Film at the Saturn Awards, it got poor reviews from critics, who found Star Crash to be a lousy imitation to Star Wars, only with a weaker script and poor special effects. And sadly, from there, Star Crash slipped into obscurity, thanks in part to the lack of home media. As the years went on, there was no VHS or DVD releases of Star Crash, apart from the odd bootleg copy here and there. So, it kind of became a lost legend, an anomaly that only several people remember, to which many younger viewers may have thought that this late 70s Star Wars ripoff starring David Hasselhoff may have even been an urban legend. However, in later years, it has made a comeback and gotten more recognition, thanks to more people talking about it, like director Eli Roth, who seems to have an absolute love for it, along with the movie featuring on Science Fiction Theatre in 2017, as well as a Shout Factory DVD release. So now the world can observe this bizarre lost time capsule of the late 70s. The movie is very rich in its own unique way of filmmaking, and its determined spirit and uniqueness almost makes it feel like an unintentional masterpiece, which I think it kind of is. It definitely is a standout piece in grindhouse cinema. It truly is a joyful, cheap, trashy, and sexy movie. A glorious B-movie spectacle. And I think that's where Star Crash gets its true appeal. I think Mel Magazine summed it up the best when they called it a strange fever dream and the kinky cousin of Star Wars. <laughs> and I agree. Now, Star Crash isn't Citizen Kane or The Godfather, but that's kind of the appeal of Star Crash. It's the rogue anti-Citizen Kane. It goes against the grain and joyfully does its own thing. And damn it, it's gonna look good while it's doing it. It's hard to not love this movie in all its shameless B-movie glory. If you're a fan of old school grindhouse cinema, then I highly recommend Star Crash. Don't listen to all the people saying it's a crap movie. I mean, yeah, it's a crap movie, but in a great and wonderful way. Anyway, I'm Minty, and don't forget, Star Crash introduced the green lightsaber five years before Return of the Jedi did. See ya!